innovation related to student learning, ma'am. Ma'am, it would be nice if we could introduce yourself. That would be nice. Good afternoon, all of you. Like we all know that as teachers, after lunch, what she was telling, that uh, we need to be very creative after the lunch session. So, um, thank you for the opportunity. I'm Kalpana Mohan, uh, Vidyashil Academy principal in Bangalore. Uh, first and foremost, my question is, we are talking about innovation in all the places, but what really is innovation? We can say, innovation this, innovation that, innovation here, innovation there. What exactly is innovation in a student life and a teacher's life? You get into the class, do something different, call, probably can call as innovation, or which inspire a child, that can be called as an inspiration, or probably the child contribute in the classroom, that again possibly an inter, uh, innovation. I think you're right, innovation is something which is very, very contextual. It cannot be, there can't be any cliche definition really for innovation. Yeah. I think it's something that probably comes up at this far the moment and whatever is the need of the hour or the need of the learner. Absolutely. Yeah. See, we all are talking about child-centered education, child-driven education. How many of us are giving that kind of opportunity for the kids to speak in the class and tell their ideas? Because now uh, I can just uh, cite from few here and there. But one important thing is when we are teaching a class of physics with uh, myopia and hypermetropia, her short side, long side, a, children, a child can ask you a question, what is squint, which is not a defect of I given in physics books. So these things are allowed in the class, the children are asking questions. We need to be prepared and deliver it differently. Probably that is, we can call it as an innovation. So innovation in a classroom can be a small anecdote, small kind of uh, role play on a sunny day, a teacher wearing a raincoat and uh, cap in the class and umbrella going inside to teach rain dance or rain. These kind of things can be an innovation. But are they going to make a change? Yes, definitely. The child is going to start thinking, what happened to the teacher? And similarly, a child who comes out and stand there, give a role play. That is innovation because uh, they, they, we call so many names, active learning, differentiation, inclusive education, multiple intelligence, what not, everything we have finished. But still, we come and discuss in all the meeting about innovation in education. So is, that means to say, it has not gone into the deep roots in the classroom. So possibly, we can look into this as a different way. That itself is innovation. That's what I feel that yes, yes. innovation should happen. In Thank you moment. so much, Kalpana. I'm sure we can do with a loud round of applause for Kalpana. Wonderful ideas. But I think innovation is something that should inspire a sense of awe, a sense of wonder, a desire to question. That is what you would probably call innovation in a classroom. Something that makes learning fun, both for the learner and the teacher. Thank you. My name is Iman and I'm principal uh, at Stash Model School, Punjabi, Bab Delhi. Uh, what I was trying to uh, draw everybody's attention to is there's a big confusion about what is innovation and what is creativity. Okay? This is a very big problem we have at every level, be it at the level of students, the teachers, and the ones who make the policies, whoever does that. Now once we decide what that means and where we draw the line, that's one issue. Issue number two being what ma'am also said, some of the things which came under innovations years ago, I have think about it. Absolutely. I mean, we have obsolete. to now think of something else now. Yes. And uh, role play is no longer innovation. Yes. Simulations are way out long ago. You have to think of something that hasn't been done before. It if, has if you could be kind enough, uh, ma'am, also to define, as you very rightly said, that there is obviously a subtle kind of dividing line between creation and innovation. So how would you differentiate the two? How would, how, let, us, let us discuss it here. Yeah, yeah, because please. what for me is innovation uh, yeah. might be actually bordering on the line of creativity for others. All right. Those can who really draw a line there? Right. Is there anybody here who feels that you can draw a line between creativity and innovation? No. All the creation as our innovation and all the innovation cannot be creativity. Yes. Probably that is the yes. It's difficult to make a, you know. Absolutely. So, 
creativity is an element you probably bring, a sub-skill that you bring to innovation is creativity. Unless there's creativity, innovation, I'm sure, would be quite, quite meaningless, right? We have some more seasoned principals here who may want to talk about innovation related to students. What about a lot of us talking about, very often we talk about, you know, integrated learning. Is there anybody here who would like to speak a little about integrated learning as innovation in the classrooms? Or transdisciplinary learning, if you must put it differently, transdisciplinary learning or integrated learning. The new term of course is integrated learning. Okay, anyone who's doing that in the classrooms. Holiday homework. That would be wonderful if you could introduce us as everybody knows who's speaking. I'm Rita Jha, principal with the Bharti Public School, Seeker, Rajasthan. A holiday homework which we gave. It, we had a small brainstorming session and we wanted, you know, like to get not burden the children with homework pressure. So the teachers had a brainstorming session and then they gave a project to the children. Alright? I come from Rajasthan, so it was uh, work on the SC or STs, or you can say, yes, uh, the, the indigenous people of Rajasthan, Tri sorry, the tribes, the tribes of Rajasthan, all right, comparative analysis, social life, social studies, then population, then uh, comparative uh, study of the population, make a bar, divert, mathematics into it, absolutely, make absolutely. a PowerPoint presentation, language yes. to it, yes. then it's okay, we divide skills. English or Hindi, skills, yes. yes, so language, then uh, the children coming and presenting, language into it, then prepare a scrapbook on it, creativity drawing into it, and that is what we are going to give it to, uh, for evidence of assessment. Fabulous, fabulous. Thank you so much. My question yes. is, are we doing it other than holiday homework? Everybody Everything Absolutely. Yes. Very, very important. Yes. Right. Yes. I don't think it should be confined only to the holiday homework. I think a lot of learning that happens in the classroom needs to go beyond pen and paper. And I think it, this kind of transdisciplinary learning or integrated learning as we call it, should happen in the classrooms. But of course, more than just saying and uh, insisting that it should happen in the classrooms across the board, I think the important thing is to equip teachers with the requisite skills to be able to take on something as challenging as integrated learning. And I'm glad we are bringing this up. So, Right. The, the original question, and she talked about creativity and innovation. Now, firstly, she talked about role play. You are having a topic. You have tried many other methods, the children are not understanding, or whichever way. She introduces role play, the children understand it better. Do you call it creativity contextually? Has the teacher, the taught or the students put together, worked out a context wherein learning happens in an optimized environment? Why? If we are in the classrooms going to look for Apple iPad kind of Steve Jobs innovation, it rarely happens. Yes. That's something which we fundamentally require to forget. Two, each option, now we talk about new pedagogy, old pedagogy, interaction of an iPad into a classroom. Is it an innovation? Is the interaction of computers into the classroom? Is it an innovation? Is the introduction of the integrated, the Finnish people have completely taken away subject-based curricula. They only have phases, they have used several other terms. So question one, creativity in the classroom, it has to be a given, otherwise you and I don't exist here. Absolutely. Yes. You as a moderator here would like to be more creative than anything else to generate the discussion. Two, innovation in the way we are looking at it. Much more than what we are doing it in our classrooms and in the space where we think about it. At a much larger level, innovation would happen wherein we can reach across to larger number of students from basically lower sense of economic and social constructs. So, innovation, creativity, the way we perceive it as big ticket 
is really going to happen those are the small small things which we do inside the classroom which is not even looked at properly which matters more rather than anything else thank you ma'am thank you ma'am actually just i want to add one point here yes. like uh, sir it was telling that whenever we were talking about technology in the classroom that was innovation some time before now what happened it has taken away all the creativity general uh, emotional attachment to the teacher just by cutting pasting things so that has taken away the entire creativity also to a certain extent so we have to balance it out that where the technology is to be given it is to be given in small doses and more of human interaction in the classroom will lead to a lot of creativity in any case introducing technology or any kind of uh, technological means in the classroom is not innovation per se it's how you use what you have been given to use how effectively you use and i think there lies the role of a teacher as a facilitator there lies the role of a teacher how much leeway are you willing to give how much are you going to how much independence would you allow a child and where would you ask the child to draw a line for example you spoke about cutting pasting i think it's very significant to teach children about referencing skills and about acknowledging sources and about plagiarism the other day uh, we were talking about the information literacy project we started in our school and we trained a, a handful of teachers in this and this is the first thing that we told our teachers very significant that when you teach children the researching skills using technology as a means we cannot shy away from technology that's here to stay right that's here to stay so let's make the best use of technology that is available to us and use it effectively and there lies our responsibility and our ethics as a teacher we need to instill in our students the ability to be able to cull to acknowledge the sources to use technology effectively to make sure they know where do we where, where is it that the misuse of technology starts Maths fair are all as teachers. Sorry, Not only the students, but also the teachers. Like when they are making lesson plans, also they need to have their own ideas into the lesson plan rather than just taking on from the internet. Absolutely, level. absolutely so, sir. Thank you. I will take one minute. Good afternoon. I am Arpit Sharma from Satyadarshan Vidyalaya, Faridabad. The school is running under the aegis of the Satyadarshan Trust. and the job is to transform the human behavior and i think gurudev ranga tagore the right to call the culture nurture the creativity i think we are supposed to go on that topic and then we have this year we have organized the first organize the io international equity olympiad more than 1000 schools they participated it is on the value list more than 5 lakh students they appeared 722nd august so first of all i congratulate all the principals and the students they participated how this is a change is there innovation is what innovation is bring the positive change in the life of a child of a teacher of a person that is i think the innovation is there what we have done we got the privilege to kalam he came to our school on 10th october 2013 i think they told we decided we are supposed to dedicate something to the great teacher we have started one lab robotic lab so we have named that one apj abdul kalam the innovative lab we have it as one corner in the library there is a kalam corner is there we are telling you all this one because from somewhere it is the positive change you have to bring in the mind of the child somewhere it is the positive change you have to bring i think the mind of the teacher they are already is a creative one wonderful one innovative one but i think the change that is required to change their thought process that is to be required thank you thank you so much thank you thank you for sharing your thoughts right we just spoke with yes ma'am and uh, i think uh, it's important now for students to also uh, you know they are the typical classroom i'm sure you all heard about it but i think that uh, once you start using this in regular curriculum right, as opposed to uh, you know homework that is based uh, during vacations things like that you'll see really beautiful ideas coming out of students because they're really, really intelligent and by just uh, delivering a concept to them outside of school and then using the classroom time to discuss it and see how ideas flow through their mind i think that would be really yeah. exciting 
Yeah. Wonderful student centered learning. Some of, are you doing something similar? Yeah, I was just wondering. Hi, uh, I represent a company called Vikal, uh, where we execute experiential learning. Uh, in which what we do, we uh, give uh, children the product through which they engage themselves and the learning starts there and through, through the play way method and then they come to the pen and paper and then the assessment is taken. So uh, the idea is to give them a free environment but still it's regulated because teachers become facilitator. They are learning where they are understanding how to the students score. Right? It's not like it's not... Yes, it's all about not what we want to teach the children. I think it's more about what children want to learn yeah, exactly. and how they can learn it best. Yeah. So somewhat very similar to maybe a you know flip teaching where you give them a stimulus, they prepare and come, and then you trigger off learning, which is learner-driven learning, not yeah. teacher-driven yeah. learning. It's democratized. Yes. 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 Mama, uh, before she says, is flip learning an innovation? I wouldn't say it's an innovation per se, but not too many people are using it. No, Just as technology. No, no ma'am. When we were young, hmm. young hmm. did our teachers tell us, study the subject, come back and let's discuss about it? Not too many teachers did that. Many did that? Not too many. many did that. So many may have done, as I said, no, innovation no. is basically a matter of individual attitude. Fair. So uh, some would have done it, some may not have done it. Some no. of us may not have experienced it so well. Fair. My bigger point is just to know, make it more provocative is flip learning is considered an innovation. Yes. At a certain level. At a certain level. You yes. and I have disagreed on that. Yes. Fair? Right. Right. So where does creativity go? Where does innovation go from there? On one mm -hmm. concept as mm -hmm. flip learning, I certainly found mm -hmm. flip learning to be Old wine in older bottles. That's how I perceive uh, it. Sir, there are a lot of old methods, old sources, and old tools. Old wine in new bottles. Which can be used beautifully and very innovatively by a newer generation of teachers. Right? Shall we agree on this? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. What I'm trying to raise another issue here is are we talking about innovation or innovative techniques used only by teachers? Aren't we somewhere forgetting that we have to teach our children to be innovative too? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. we can't just stop at this turn. No, no, no. We are going to the next thing, ma'am. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about was, you know, a lot of us in the classrooms are doing collaborative learning. Uh, before we go to collaborative learning, would you like to say something? Hey, I'm Varu. For me, you know, as we're discussing about innovation, anything in the classroom which helps the child to explore generate interest, you know, inspires the child and helps him to do the task is probably a waste. It will vary from each individual teacher how creative they are. And at, at the organization level, at the school level probably, are we equipping our teachers that's exactly what I said. All of us are talking yeah. about innovation, all of us are talking about yeah. integrated learning, now we're going to talk about collaborative learning, but are we equipping our teachers with the required skills? And also, as, as ma'am said, taking it forward from there, like, are we instilling the creative and innovative skills in the children? Absolutely. And when we talk about organizational level, generally we say, you know, in, in modern age, Two areas really drive the organizations, the IT and the HR. So somewhere I feel it's high time for schools to realize the importance of HR department, which not only talks about training the teachers, it also talks about how they make them work, how the grievances are taken ahead. How and more than that, maybe perhaps recruiting people with the potential and an open-mindedness to be able to unlearn and relearn. Because I think a lot of us as educators, I'm sure all of you subscribe to this view that a lot of us as educators, over a period of time, have had to really unlearn what you and I would have learned as young people and as young teachers, and absolutely relearn. Do we have the openness to learn all over again? Only then we are potentially great teachers. So probably in times to come, you know, or maybe now, there is a need where we strengthen the HR systems of any working organization per se, whether the organization has 50 people or 5,000 people. It's not only for Coke and Pepsi to invent. Right, sir. Case. We bring our discussion back to the tracks. Might give something to say. Perfectly about it. said. When you say HR, it sounds very technical. When you say human resources, it sounds so very basic. 
And creativity and innovation, why are we debating it? Creativity is thinking up of new ideas, and innovation is doing those new ideas. Now the key word is new. What is new to me may not be new. That's it's very relative. So I think rather than talking about uh, what is the definition of creativity or innovative idea? Let's talk about the innovations that we have brought yes, about. Yes, absolutely. Sisters that come what are the learn? innovations that we brought what to the table? Can I go back and introduce it to in people who are so learned yes. rather than debating on something that I can just Google and come with a technical definition? Best practices. Well, yes, there's some good practices us. each school is doing and each will talk about one good practice at least and so that all of us can Absolutely, carry so that we can take back with us the corpus. We've just spoken about integrated learning. I just told the idea of collaborative learning. Ma'am, would you like to speak about that? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there are two clubs that are run in my school. I know I'm Kashmira Jaswal. I've come from Navrachna School, Baroda, Gujarat. Now there is this club called Each Child Can Think Like a Genius in which we throw a question, a simple question like an elephant landed on your terrace. What are you going to do? Now think about it. We give them some uh, pointers as to how to, why, why has he come here, what we want to do. And then they would write wonderful solutions for it. Or, uh, design a school bag of your own and they come up. Once a school design, once a child designed us, designed us by pen. We asked them to design a pen. And this was four years back. And last year he came running to me and he showed me the newspaper and he said, ma'am, this is the pen that I had designed. Now, this wasn't the pen that he had designed four years back, but a similar pen was in the market. So he was thinking three years back of innovating a camera, a pen, camera written pen three years back and when he saw it in the newspaper, he said, this is the pen that I could have designed. So those kind of thinking skills, metacognition skills, we are training them to do. And in fact, you could instill these skills not just in a regular classroom teaching, you could do it very effectively. In fact, I believe very strongly through the co-curricular activities. We can't call them extracurricular, you call them co-curricular. You can do them so beautifully through clubs and co-curricular activities. There's a student who designed a pizza cutter in our school, a pizza cutter. It was a very simple pizza cutter with a pizza cutter on one end and a spatula to lift the pizza. He got it patented and he got an Ignite award for the same and now that pizza cutter is in the market. Right. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, yes, sir, please. And we speak only of uh, innovative, uh, you know, whatever innovative uh, efforts we are making in our respective uh, schools, so that that's a takeaway from the session. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Hello. Okay. Uh, we have just introduced a very simple uh, thing known as RTT in so our school. Need to know which institution okay. From. My name is Ashish Patnagar. I am from Chitwara International School, Chandigarh. So what we have done is we have introduced a very simple system uh, of RTT revision through teaching, wherein we ask, you know, a fourth standard student to teach third standard class on a concept in which he or she is comfortable with. Right? A very simple thing, their child innovates. He makes his own uh, PPTs and all that, and sometimes we observe the exam. Very simple <coughs> example, RTT. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Do you have a mic there? Um, so very quickly, I just want to share. One of the processes that we do in our schools, uh, Willie Broad George, before you jump in. Yes. <laughs> Willie Broad George from St. Willie Broad Innovative School, Nala Subhara. Uh, that's about something in Bombay. When you look from here, it's in Bombay. Uh, so we all, uh, have you heard flipped learning, right? Where you try to flip the classroom. We just spoke about it. Excellent. So I'm going to speak about the next one. Uh, we have flipped our open day. So what really happens is, we call it the student-led parents meeting. So as soon as the examination gets over, we, we innovated on the way our answer sheet looks. So normally answer sheet has school name on top and then God bless you and then a lot of blank, blank lines. What we have is on the first page, we've got like these two or three charts and graphs that the kids populate, make those, kid, those graphs after the teacher gives them the correct answer sheet. So what happens is kids are able to look at where they are, what they're good at, what they're not good at. Then as a group, the whole class makes these data sheets, just one graph paper, showing where they are in relation to their class and where the other class is. From that, they transfer that data to the third format, which is called a learning sheet. 
where the kids write down what am I good at, what am I not really good at, what can I help others in, and what help I need from others. From that, they move to the next day. Now that's the culmination day, which is called the open day. All the parents come to school and the child leads the parent meeting, which is a 30 minute agenda meeting, where the child explains to the parent the root cause, the number of errors, what he plans to do, how he does. So what happened? Pardon? Each end of that section? To their own respective parents, I'm sure. Yes. Parent to the child to that parent. Only his parent. Only his parent. And we have seen tremendous shifts. Parents who were earlier, right, who would like jump off. And I think that's a brilliant idea. Large round of applause. Beautiful idea. Because I feel that uh, you know the uh, you're in you're in fact equipping students with some very valuable skills here. The ability to infer, the ability to analyze, yeah. and the ability to be able to present that data and articulate what yes. Yes, and, and justify the data, yes. And, and also communication. And so I think it's brilliant. And the parent can see how the child has changed. So this is the last thing I just wanted to say. All these are four different formats. The four different formats, and I would like to share it with any school. In fact, you must. We, we'll, I, I definitely want to take it. So I have uploaded it online on a website he called. Himself. Yes, yes, so and I think whoever wishes to I, uh, procure this, so, uh, you know, I have uploaded it on. I have already put it online on a website called greatschoolleaders.com. Just download this and use it in your school. It works. Brilliant. And I think the the uh, takeaway, in fact, from an experiment like this, I won't call it an experiment, yeah. innovation. Well, could I just finish please? Uh, I think the most brilliant part of this innovation is that students learn to take responsibility for their own learning. I think that's the most important. Brilliantly well done. I think that's a beautiful takeaway from the session. Did you have name? Yeah, I think so. A lot of people want to know your name. You will introduce yourself. So, she's out. Don't talk to Nala Supara. Give us proper. Willie ah. Broad. My name is Willie Broad. Willie W I L L I B R O R D. Willie Broad George. And the school name is also called Saint Willie Broad. Thank also you. Over. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, from Vikram Hathi once again. Something very similar to what he is doing. Right from class one, I have introduced the model papers. Yes. Generally, we have model papers in class 10, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? We have introduced the model papers. Teachers prepare model papers. Say, suppose the essay 2 is of 80 marks. The model paper is prepared on 40 marks. And uh, before the, it's 10 days before the examination or any assessment. Children are given those model papers. They do it. Then the model paper is given to the peer, to the fellow student. Okay, he takes it home, he assesses it, he finds the answer. So you are... So pure assessment. Yes. He is opening the textbook, finding the answer, correcting, pencil, highlighting. Then the next day, we, like he had an open session with the parent. We have open session with students. Yes. His friend tells him where he has made the errors. So you know, it's like, uh, it's a, uh, uh, you can say, the flip learning and Learning. And in fact, uh, a lot of schools do follow this method on three-way conferences yeah, where you have, I think a lot of you as international school educators will be aware that in PYP, student-led conferences are a norm and similarly in a lot of international schools and other schools too that teach the CBC curriculum, I think three-way conferences are becoming extremely popular as an open forum for discussion between the teacher, the thought and the parent. Mom, uh, Kalpana again. Um, our school, uh, one of the things, very important thing is the collaborative between the teachers and the students. As, after teaching every topic, there is a format given to the children that they create their own evaluation sheet on the particular topic. And they also write which is the best part of that particular topic and which is the muddiest part of it. And after the topic is over four or five days, children sit in the class and discuss with the teacher that this particular area was not clear to us. Wonderful. Wonderful. So collaboration between the teacher, teacher and the child. And the teachers take it so very sportingly. They yes. never even say that the, my class was commented about. 
they revisit the, the concept if it is a problem and explain things to the students. This is happening from so long and we are having a very, very positive feedback from the teachers that the children are able to tell them exactly where the problems are in the classroom. Wow. So even the children who are not very good, probably the differentiated learners, they are also able to connect to other peers through this. Right. Thank you so much, sir. I think getting all the ideas are very wonderful and I believe that most of the schools are using this. So I'll tell you something which I did in my school. It was like we generally find out outstanding students, high achievers, and then some of the students don't do not well. So we started uh, with the concept of laughter yoga and dancing. So actually we, instead of taking their remedial classes, we made a 40 minutes plan where they do a laughter yoga and it is not about it is not a boring yoga, it is when they enjoy when they collaborate and then they dance. So after three months of study, we were able to find out that their grades started improving because it was more of their self-esteem that they were not enjoying coming to school. Because my definition of a good school is happy students and happy teachers. So if they're happy coming to school and if their self-esteem is good, believe me, uh, the grades will automatically improve and I've been doing it for the last one year and the results are really encouraging. Wonderful. Great. I think we could talk briefly also about the... Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, one more thing, madam. Uh, one sure. more thing, uh, maybe it could, it could create some interest. We started an honesty, honesty shop. We had a tuck shop in our school and we had a tuck shop in our school. Honesty shop. So we had a tuck shop and in that tuck shop, it was a man shop. Uh, the students used to come, they used to get some money and things. So it had stationery and different things to eat. So we got an idea like on 2nd of October we can make it an honesty shop. We did it in 2012. So it is an unmanned shop. It is an unmanned shop where students would come, pick whatever they want to pick. There is a box, they put the money through it. And if uh, they don't have money with them, they just put a note over there that I am this is this class, I don't have money today, I will put tomorrow. And, the, and Wonderful idea. one person is taking care of that and believe me for the last three years we have not even lost one rupee. And the school wonderful, school wonderful. Well done, sir. And the school Thank you. We have got 3,200 students in our school. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, it's, it's, it's a great idea. Some of us started it in some of our schools. And we, didn't lost in, we lost in one year. So credit to you. <laughs> so we lost in one year. So credit, failure here. so credit goes to my students and the teachers who are doing that. I'm, I'm representing Cambridge International School, Dasko Punjab. It is a gem private school, a gem education. Cambridge International School, Punjab, and it's a gem private school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I did the same thing with books in my school. You know, I had a, on every floor, we kept some books and that was a student library. They took the books, wrote there who was taking it, returned it, kept it back. Initially, there was chaos. There were a few naughty ones who, you know, uh, did a lot of mischief. But finally, it started working. I'm from Golaya School, Palman. I'm Mrs. Pratipa. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. There's somebody there who would like to speak, ma'am. We just like pass the mic, please. We've always been talking about uh, the performance of the students, how the students are performing. We've been talking about the parent teachers meet, that uh, how the teachers are supposed to be telling the parents about the performance of the student. We did speak about observation also in the last two days' discussion. We also, I heard it from somebody mentioning about uh, teacher observation. Uh, I'm from Subodh Public School, Ramba Jaipur. We have started with the practice long back in the year 2000. And I would say it is, it was an innovative idea and I'm sure you all will accept it. It was a system of teacher appraisal. Initially, we started it with classes 9, 10, 11 and 12, where our students have been giving us report card. It's a report card to the teacher. Teachers, uh, the students, they do it online. And it well, that's a very tricky one, I don't know. That's a very tricky one, I don't know how many will accept. I'll, I'll just explain it, and I'm sure everybody should be accepting it. Because uh, we've been very successful with it for the last 15 years. 
we've had the coverage of it on the Star TV and everywhere. Initially, when we started, there was a big, uh, I mean, repulsion from everywhere that how could we accept a report card from our students? But believe me, friends, for last 15 years, we have been doing it. It's an online system that we have developed where we have 11 parameters and the students have been giving us grades. And the grades are like, it is excellent, good and average. Uh, Ma'am, I'd like to know, do you train your children to yes. these grades? Yes. The training is, the students are in the class, like uh, the coordinators of the different classes. They go to the classes, they explain to the children the system. It is only the new sections where they need to be explained. Otherwise, the rest of them, they all have been into the system and they know that once in a year we have to do the grading. And I, the, there are around 11 parameters in it. And on those 11 parameters, the children are grading us. Excellent is three, good is two, and average and is And you really three. believe every child is uh, uh, bright enough, intelligent enough, judicious enough to uh, be able to yes, break? Yes, I, I, I'll speak about that also. Initially, we all have doubts in our mind that maybe it is, you know, come on, come on, yeah, your ma'am ko zero de dete hai. Okay, or let us put one. That was what everybody had it in their mind that children will be doing that. But it is something where children have not been doing it. They have been doing it very religiously and barring maybe, suppose it is a class of 40, if two or three of them, if might, they might do it. I don't, uh, I, I don't deny that fact, but the majority of them, they do it very nicely. And what happens is, suppose there is a parameter like, the teacher uses the blackboard or not. I tell you, it's a very simple concept and every teacher will be saying, I use it, I use it, everybody uses. But for a language teacher and for a math teacher, there is a difference in using the blackboard. And I tell you, with these points, you could make out that when it was for a language teacher, she was getting less marks over there in comparison to the math teacher who was getting more. Why? Because the children were very judiciously doing it. Some teachers who are not very audible in the class. So the parameter which is testing, which is putting in over there, is the teacher audible to you? And there you make out the difference. And the truth and the reality comes forth, and we've been successful with it for the last 15 years. So every thank year... You, thank you, ma'am. We'll uh, need to give some more time to some other sure. uh, members of this forum. Please do. Going away from what man said, thank you, man. But just a small innovation about resourcefulness and class management during substitute period. All of our schools have held uh, the exams like IIT, JE, CTET, NET, and we get those big boxes, the trunks that we get in, in which they bring their papers. What we did was we got the children in their art classes to paint them. The school invested in getting barrow or wheelbarrows under them. Now on every floor, in every corridor, we have a wheelbarrow mobile library where the children donate. For well, that's a very good idea. Yeah. So very the, interesting. Um, the umpteen boxes that we get every time we hold a JE and IIT and other exams are utilized and in every corridor for six sections of one. We have a wheelbarrow library that the CR of the class would run and get in. And the, the books are donated by the children. They are resourceful about it. They maintain because they donated the books. Yesterday, or perhaps uh, morning, you talked about the Ingrid Colvin. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. But that's another very, very brilliant idea. This is the mobile library managed by children and maintained by children. Yeah, it's very important because the student is the most important stakeholder. And I think it's very resources. important to involve students in just about every part of their learning. I'm sorry. You have, she says they have a question bank of sorts. Which? Now the children prepare questions and they give it to us. And what we do is at least 25% of the questions are selected from. So they also feel really proud. They take real uh, care in uh, making the questions. Right. And of course, it goes to their self esteem. Absolutely. Secondly, we have something called a desired seed box mm -hmm. for each class. Suppose you feel like that seed your desire, you can call it to that's married by children. Mm -hmm. That is to reach the community. All right. We also have beauty club. If you feel like doing some of your bad habits, then you come to the club and own up. And that is working really well. And I think that school, many of the children, their bad habits will get to go Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, what about involving the parents and community at large? 
I think all of us have spoken about students, we've spoken about teachers, what about involved in the community? I think we could ask somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Anyone who wants to speak about how about involving parents in innovation? And how about involving community in innovation? Yes, ma'am. Could somebody just pass a mic to her, please? Hello, my name is Neva. I am from Hyderabad. Uh, we work with uh, all affordable private schools where children come to study in schools where parents are not largely educated. So there, uh, uh, most of these schools, uh, you see, uh, right from six standard, they start doing their IIT foundation, medical foundation. So a lot of craze for like all the children they need to get into IIT or medicine. So what we did there is like, um, uh, nine standard and 10 standard children before they go out of the school. We asked them what do they aspire for? What is the vision for their career? Because mostly these parents, they come from a, a low middle class where uh, they come from um, a labor segment. So they do not have a kind of a vision what the children aspire to go for. So the children, they decide like if they're interested. Suppose like I want to become an engineer or a doctor or a co-culturist or different kind of profession. So uh, teachers and we guide them and through the children they systematically prepare the research for over a month and we invite the parents and the children educate the parents. It's not just medicine and engineering alone. There are a variety of professions like alternate careers. So what all they can be done, like in a, in a single day, almost like 200, 300 parents come to the schools and educated through the children of different kinds of careers they can do. Wonderful, I think that's a great, great step. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, ma'am, before you proceed, I just want to add to what she has just mentioned. In fact, uh, I um, belong to, I mean, I'm heading a school in uh, Dehradun. Uh, there is an organization there called Purful Youth Development Society. I don't know, anyone who's from that part, uh, from Uttarakhand and from Dehradun, uh, would know about the excellent work which is being done by the Purple Youth Development Society. Purple is a small village. Uh, most of the population of Purple and around uh, is quite, uh, you know, they are not literate. And the children who are going to this uh, the school which is run by the Purple Youth Development Society, if you look up their website, it's a completely charitable school which is supported by a lot of people who have the means to support a charitable organization like this. But if I were to talk about the quality of work which is happening there, I think it is exemplary quality of work. In fact, quality that matches the best schools in the country. What this school does is it, it uh, takes in these children from homes uh, where, where the parents are not able to afford uh, huge fields. And these children are then mentored very carefully. And mind you, when I last visited the school, I was pleasantly surprised to see that most of the children were so articulate. They spoke fluently, not just in Hindi, but in English as well. And these children are mentored, some of them, and then they are sent for overseas exchange programs with good schools overseas who are willing to take on the onus of educating these children for two years and more. And some of these children are going to excellent IB schools overseas. And I think that is what brilliant innovation is. If a school can take up a project like this and spread it in the community and use innovation to educate children like this who have the potential to be able to go to these IB schools or so-called elite schools, I think that's a brilliant step forward. Somewhat similar to what you said, empowering children. I think the crux of innovation should be to empower children and to empower teachers. So I think innovation is all about empowering children. Yes ma'am. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm from Azim Tindri University uh, in a Microsoft. Uh, hi, my name is Bhavini. Uh, me and my friend actually, we are from Azim Tindri University in Bangalore. Um, we're doing our masters in education and uh, something that my friend recently did uh, in our field engagement in schools was uh, peace education is something that isn't really addressed uh, in schools today. Uh, so she came up with this idea where uh, she used a video game called Road Run, which is basically a racing game. Uh, 
to uh, educate her children about what does it mean to work in a team together. And so she played the game with them, which is a single racer game basically. And whenever she was, uh, she used to knock down an opponent, she used to stop the game and say, no, I can't do this, I can't knock somebody down and go ahead, you know. Uh, so every time she stopped, children would be like, Akka, why are you doing this? You have to win the race. She said, no, I can't do it if I uh, upset somebody. Well, that's a so useful message. She start back again. Uh, and then she said, I want you guys to design a video game which uses peace. I don't want you guys to design a video game which uses peace. Excellent. Oh. Wonderful, well done. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, ma'am. Peace education is really good. Very good. And it's the need of the hour. Uh, there's an idea I want to share. Um, invariably, we find that our students are making the wrong choices as far as subjects are concerned or even professions are concerned. You know, and by the time they realize that, some of them feel it's too late and then they get stuck in the same profession for life. Uh, so there is this concept of job shadowing. That is something you can... Are internships somewhat similar to internships? Or uh, is it a little different? I, I just tell you, it's like... A, the students, especially at the age uh, when they're in class 9th and 10 and 11th and 12th, that time when they kind of, you know, start uh, deciding which way to go uh, to. So that's the time you tell them that they should spend one day with a person who's in that profession. So go and have a look, like if it's a hospital, then spend the day in the hospital with that one person, see what all do they do and find out everything so that they are well aware of what they're getting into. No, it really works for students. Wonderful, because are, great. Because there are cases where um, we find that students have joined the medical college and the first time they are taken to the mortuary, uh, they want to you know, call back right home and yes. I want to leave it. But do you think yes. perhaps one day is enough to be able to shadow somebody in their profession and to figure at out? At least it gives you an idea about what it is. You know, job shadowing when I'm talking about, what I mean is that that professional should give them the true picture. What happens is from uh, a distance when you look at things, it's a very rosy picture that you look at, you know. And uh, so the other side uh, is uh, what needs to be seen by the students. But that's a great idea. idea. Great idea. Thank you so much. So, uh, so I work with a company called Priya Learning. Uh, I'll add to what Ma'am said. So in Priya, we have this one session a week. So the students have to work for eight sessions on single profession in the class time to find out what they want to do. So there are different teams to go to find out different professions they have to do, then study of what the job requires, how does how do they qualify to go to that college or to go into that profession, what do they have to do. So they do an in-depth study and that is when the change happens. Because you know, if I just come in and talk about how good education is or how good law is or how good medical is for 30 minutes or one hour, the students will not go, they will get confused. But here for eight weeks, they keep continuously working on one single profession which they think is good. And not many times it happens and the student realizes that this is not the profession which I want to take for life. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think, uh, let, let's uh, ask somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Uh, yes, please. That phone up. Those. Thank you so much. I'm not speaking as a school, I'm speaking as a parent. Uh, my girl but that's that's what because goes, I think we've covered this about everything except yeah. parents. So uh, my <laughs> girl goes to a school in Ahmedabad and uh, what they have is for all their events at the school, they have got these different committees. So they've got a prop committee, they've got, uh, for anything that happens there's a committee. And the children actually have to apply to get that job. So, and when they apply, suppose I want to be in the prop committee, I need to make a case to my, to, to the committee, which says that why I am best suited for the prop committee. And uh, at the, so this is, uh, they have to make a, they have to put in a resume, an application, and then they have to justify that. And every year, at the end of the year, they make a resume and they keep adding on it. So from last year to this year, what are the skills that I've added and what is it that I value and what do I look to change? So I, I thought that was pretty... That's, that's a great idea. Yes, keeping a record. It's a Riverside School at Amsterdam. Yeah, Riverside, oh. Yeah. Uh, Kiri there, please. Kiri there, please. Kiri there, yeah. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm from Ryan International, Basant Kunj. And this is to take you away from academics to community service. So we had uh, 
adopted a close by community uh, that is at my Palpur. And uh, we used to take our children there and they would work with the community out there. We very soon realized that the response was so huge. Then we started identifying the need areas. And we realized that uh, continuing education was a big problem. Children did go to school but were not able to continue studying because they did not have tutorial help. So earlier we used to send a bus where our kids used to go, identified from various classes, and they would teach these children. Again, the, the kind of response was so huge that we couldn't accommodate everybody in the school bus. So we opened out our classes for them. So after two, there is a roster. And what happened was earlier, yes, some few children participated and volunteered to teach these children from Maya Palpa, which is now 65 in number. So we just tried to encourage these kids by saying that, of course, if you, if you show some community service, you would, of course, get a good, you know, you, this, these hours would be mentioned in your character certificate, later on maybe in your LOR or something. But that was the beginning. Today they don't even want that mention and they are coming and it's the children who are now teaching and tutoring these children and we only increased in number. We started with 50, we went up to 85, we now have a maintained number of 65 students. Thank you ma'am. I think a lot of schools are also doing it under the aegis of the Interact Club which is an offshoot of the Rotary Club. I'm sure all of you are running the Interact Clubs. Yes, and brilliantly so. But thank you so much for sharing. Uh, very quickly, I think uh, we're running out of time, sir. Right. A quick point. We tried, we have succeeded now after five years. Every student, birthday, one, you wear traditional dress, which was a problem. Two, to visit two places of worship other than his own and come back and speak in the assembly. The first and second year, I had help to pay. Many a time children would not go, go, we would put them in a bus and take them, especially to visit a Dharka or a place like that. Now after five years we can say that it is now part of the school system and we have succeeded. Worth trying it out. Thank you. Thank you. That's a brilliant idea. Are there any more brilliant ideas? Shall we close the, uh, do we have time or? Uh, this is regarding five minutes. Three or five minutes to find out. Ma'am, ma yes. this is regarding like uh, choosing a career. Most of them take this, sorry, uh, science or maths. They shun humanities or I uh, would say commerce. DMIT, Dermatology Multiple Intelligence Test. Since last week I've come across this, uh, uh, what's say, innovative way of assessing a child. Where you think a thumbprint? All the fingerprints. All fingerprints, yes. And wonderful, means I have just worked it out on me and exactly my, my weakness, my strengths, my uh, inclination for a particular, uh, what do you say, subject clearly is given. And yeah, it's a very, very good test and very comprehensive. I'm not advocating the test, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't work for the company. So, so problematic children uh, who, like, uh, uh, we are unable to, you know, channelize their energies. This can complement, because it's not the only one, but yes, it can complement. DMIT. A person from Jaipur came last week and he showed it to me. Well, yes, the concept of multiple intelligences yes. in Howard Gardner's theory. Yes. I think we need to actually put it into practice and that should be one of the innovations that should yes. be happening in a classroom. Acknowledging children for their inherent skills, a skill which is strong with a student, rather than deriding a student for a skill that they have not been able to develop or give evidence of, of proficiency in. I think that is very, very important. And finally, before we close the discussion, any more innovative ideas? Uh, very quickly, uh, yes ma'am, I think you have spoken. I would like to share uh, three ideas from the perspective of student, teacher and the parent. Uh, one thing is, in the mad rush of competition for marks and law, what we felt is it is better to make the children realize that they compete with themselves. So rather than concentrating on the awards to the first timers or the 90 percenters, we started recognizing the incremental improvement in the, the child. child is competing with yeah. itself or herself. The Brilliant. Whoever has improved Brilliant. at least 20% from where they were, they were recognized and given awards. Uh, Absolutely. Brilliant. Brilliant.
and coming to the community service part or whatever, the girl safety, what we have done is we have partnered with the parents also of different communities and the students, it is completely a student driven activity. The students go to different communities, they present a look and matter. We named it as My Safety in My Hands. So the parents of that community organize the place or whatever it is and the teachers are partnered in the sense of accompanying the students for their security and the, the, our students speak to the students of the other communities and it is my safety in my hands and this year we have carried it forward as my resources in my hands. Thank you. And I must also share with you as an educator, I personally believe that most principals and heads will feel that the parents are a huge resource pool. I think you only need to delve into that resource pool and it's also very important to engage parents in everything that happens in the school. They are most willing stakeholders. So I think you need to dip into the resource pool, find parents who are will, will, willing to build partnerships with you to take your school to the next level. So I think at this forum, time to close, I think at this forum we've discussed a whole gamut of innovative ideas Thank you for bringing to the table such brilliant, innovative ideas. You can give all of yourselves a loud round of applause. Thank you so much for contributing so beautiful. And a big round of applause to a very innovative moderator. Big round of applause. Thank you.